What makes coral reefs healthy or sick? What happens to oil after a spill? What role do oceans play in climate change? 70% of the Earth's surface is covered in oceans, one of the least understood and most important environments on Earth. What happens when this polyp comes up? To decipher the secrets of the oceans, Roman Stalker studies processes that happen either too quickly or at a scale too small to see with the naked eye. If we want to be able to predict them in the future, then we need to understand the mechanisms. To do that, he's drawing on techniques that once helped him answer a very different question. How does his cat drink milk? I took a high-speed camera home and pointed it at my cat while it was lapping. And when I looked at this in slow motion, there was a moment in which I realized how it really works. The cat curves the tip of the tongue backwards until it adheres to the surface of the liquid. This then allows the liquid to adhere to the rough tongue, and the cat then very rapidly draws it up. But we also learned another thing. We learned that nature hides fascinating processes and mechanisms right under your eyes. And this happens not just with cats, but everywhere in nature. I'm a very keen diver. I really enjoy the fact that you can take your time and observe these otherwise inaccessible ecosystems. Coral reefs are some of the most diverse and important ecosystems on our planet, and we're losing them at a very fast pace. We therefore started a research project using microscopes and video cameras to really understand what happens at the surface of corals. I was expecting the surface of a coral to be a very calm environment where things happen very slowly. What we found was exactly the opposite. The coral itself is not passive. It doesn't just sit there and wait. Instead, it is covered by a dense layer of hairs. They're called cilia. They're very similar to the cilia that we have in our airways that help us expel mucus and pollutants. The way the coil uses the cilia we have discovered is to create very, very strong flows. It stirs up its immediate environment and creates very complex flows. The researchers cultivate small coral colonies and then study tiny pieces of that coral using microscopes and high-speed cameras. They have learned that the flows created by the cilia increase the supply of nutrients for the coral and may help keep infectious bacteria at bay. This kind of defense mechanism could be crucial because coral secretes mucus, which Stalker's team has discovered actually attracts harmful bacteria. Bacteria love the mucus. They are able to sense it in very low concentrations and swim towards it very rapidly to attack and kill the coral. Stalker and his team study this process with the help of a new technology, called microfluidics. Microfluidics is, in a nutshell, plumbing at very, very small scale. Essentially, what we can do is recreate a piece of ocean in the laboratory, but now we have full control over it. We can watch it, we can manipulate it, we can take videos of it, and we can look at what individual organisms do in this environment. And they found that climate change poses risks for coral. As ocean temperatures rise, bacteria can swim to coral more quickly. What that does is allow the pathogens, these bacteria that kill the corals, to reach the surface of the coral much, much more effectively. It's only by understanding how these processes really work that we have a chance to predict what will happen as we continue to change our planet. Even as some bacteria threaten fragile ecosystems, others can protect them. For instance, when oil spills happen, the most visible cleanup efforts focus on the slick at the surface, but much of the oil remains below in the form of tiny droplets. Some bacteria eat these droplets, but exactly how they do this is poorly understood. How does the bacterium find the oil droplet? How does it jump on it? How does it attach to it? What we have decided to do is to recreate the small oil spills in our laboratory, which consists of only a few droplets of crude oil, and then we looked directly what happens 
to those oil droplets in the presence of bacteria. What we saw was fascinating. The action of bacteria on these droplets of oil is very, very intense. Once they find them and attach to the droplets of oil, they start growing until they cover the entire surface of that oil droplet. Once that has happened, they exert such an intense pressure on the oil droplet that the droplet completely changes shape. This process may help bacteria consume oil more quickly, but oil is not their only source of food. They also eat marine particles, which drives one of the ocean's most important mechanisms, the biological pump. The biological pump takes carbon from the surface ocean, transfers it to the deep ocean, and as a result, pulls CO2 out of the atmosphere. The biological pump is actually a very simple mechanism. There are small organisms called phytoplankton in the surface of the ocean that use carbon dioxide in order to grow. When they die, they form particles that are heavier than water and sink. If they make it all the way to the bottom of the ocean, then the net effect is that they have transported carbon that was originally in the form of CO2 deep down in the ocean. There, the carbon would remain locked away for centuries. But on their way to the ocean floor, the particles are attacked by bacteria, which can interfere with the pump. If bacteria are very good at degrading these sinking particles, then very little will reach the bottom of the ocean. And the biological pump is not very effective. One thing that we discovered is that bacteria don't immediately start to eat the particle. It takes them a while. First they attach to the particle, then they grow in little colonies. It makes a little city of bacteria. And only then does the city of bacteria start munching away at a particle, eating out a little piece, and then more, and then more, and then it excavates it until ultimately the full thing is a ball of bacteria, and the entire carbon that was there initially is essentially gone. Roman challenges the way we think by looking at the individual scale, and if we really want to be able to understand how the system worked in the past, or how it will change in a future environment, we have to know how it works at that very fundamental scale. Stalker's lab is now using its tools to take on an even bigger challenge, understanding some of the smallest particles in the ocean, viruses. Viruses are even smaller than bacteria. They're a fraction of a micrometer, typically a tenth of a micrometer in size. So viruses for us represented the ultimate challenge. Viruses attack bacteria and play a key role in the ocean ecosystem. They have long been studied in isolation, but until recently, no one has observed how they interact with host cells in real time. What we have added is the ability to look at them live to look at how they jiggle around in the ocean by a process called Brownian motion and how they encounter their host cells. And most importantly, we have been able to look at that final phase of landing on how the virus attaches to the host bacterium and either stays attached or moves away again. This final landing stage has been an open question and stemmed from the fact that we have been unable to see it live. So now we can just watch directly what happens. We don't need to interfere with the system, and we can directly quantify the rates at which things happen. This knowledge will add a whole new dimension to our understanding of the biological pump. For a long time, environmental processes have been studied at the scale at which they affect humans, which is often meters or kilometers. What we do is to study environmental processes at the scale at which they really occur. We have developed technology to be able to access these scales that are otherwise inaccessible. We can see things that are otherwise too fast for the naked eye as well as too small for the naked eye. This ability to see what the naked eye cannot is opening new windows into how the ocean and the environment work improving our understanding of the planet on which we all live and depend.